All right, my friend, we keep going on with our PC. Today, we have another beautiful exercise. We have this time to write a function that converts the initial portion of the string pointed by str to its inter representation. The string, for example, is this one, this very strange string that has some spaces initially, then some plus and minuses. And then we have uh, integer chores and alphabetical chores, you see? So this function has to be able to, given this string as an input, to give back only the number 1234. So uh, the string can start with an arbitrary amount of white space as determined by the function is space. You see here we have the three because we have to check the manual three that contains only the library functions I will show you later. The string can be followed by an arbitrary amount of plus and minuses. Minus sign will change the sign of the inter return based on the amount of uh, minuses. Basically, if we have an odd number of uh, minuses, the return number is going to be negative, of course. Okay. On the contrary, it's going to be positive. We have the minuses that are going to cancel one each other, as it is in mathematics. Finally, the string can be followed by any numbers of the base 10. Your function, blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay, let's jump to the code. So here I have all my program. It's long, but it is not. I have just written the code in such a way that it's super easy to explain and understand for you. So let's decipher, let's deconstruct this program step by step. We start as usual from the main function. I have a pointer string that is exactly the string that was in the sample problem. Then I call my printf, given as an input, the return value from the function, because this function has to return an integer, namely the integer represented by the chores inside the input string. So with my printf, I'm going to print the value given back by the function ft atoy. Okay, so let's jump into the atoy function itself. This is all the function. As you can see, it's a big boy, but I repeat to you, just because I've divided this function into conceptual blocks, very easy to swallow I understand okay so let's start from the beginning I have my function that gives back an integer and takes as an input a pointer string immediately I declare a variable short that I've called parity this will be used at the end of the function to check if we have a odd or even number of minus symbols then I have a variable integer that will be the final number that I will return to the main function then I have this cascade assignment for the variable number and for the variable party. Basically what's happening here? You have an assignment that goes from right to left. So first of all, you have the variable number that takes the value zero, right? Here you have the variable number that has the value zero. And as you know, the assignment of a value to a variable is the value itself. So I can, again, use this value zero for parity. And this will resolve into the assignment of the value zero to parity. Of course, I can still use the value zero, but I don't have any other things to assign. Okay, do you understand how it works? The assignment goes from right to left. And the assignment itself is a value that I can use. I think it's pretty clear by now for you. So, okay, I have these two variables that I will use in my program. They have the values zero, perfect. Let's start the algorithm. You seen that the sample string has some spaces in the initial positions, right? So we have to skip them. You see, the string can start with an arbitrary amount of white space as determined by the function eSpace. I'm going to explain you this point. eSpace is a library function that we can use in our programs, including the C type header file. If we want to see the details of this function, we can use this command man3 eSpace. You see? With this command, we jump into the library functions manual. And here you have all the details of this specific uh, space function. Okay. To use this, you have to include, as I told you, this C type header file. Here you have the description of the function, which in the specific is going to test for white space characters. What does it mean? It means that this function is going to check if the char creates a space in the output. Let me explain better. We have a series of chars, which are these six, namely the tab, new line, vertical tab, and these two that I will explain you now, and of course the space itself, which are gonna format the output 
with some blank spaces. Let's check immediately what I'm talking about. The charts controlled by the space function are these ones. We have from number nine to number 13. We have these five charts. The number nine is the tabulation, of course, you know very well the tab. Usually it's four spaces. Then we have the line feed, which is the one you know better, is the backslash n, the one that allows you to go on the next line. Then we have this vertical tab, which is the number 11. Vertical tab is like a fancy tab, I will show you now. Then we have form feed and carriage return. So we have these five charts that are changing how the output look. So you see this program, I have a for loop which starts at number nine and is gonna end at number 13. I'm gonna increase i by one at every iteration. And then I'm gonna print the char itself, okay? I've padded the string with some slashes so it will be obvious what the char is doing, okay? So let's run the program. You see, I have the char nine, which is, which is of course the tab. It is the tab. And as you can see here, I have my spaces. Then the number 10 which is the new line, right? It is pretty obvious. Number 10, line feed. Then number 11, which is this vertical tab. Basically with this vertical tab, we go down one position, okay? Then we have the number 12, which is the form feed. In my system, it acts like the vertical tab. And then we have the number 13, which is the carriage return is gonna delete the previous charts. So you see how these charts are changing the way the output looks. That's exactly why the function is space is searching for. Some charts that are spacing the output, okay? So these ones are the culprits. These ones are the charts we wanna take care of on our exercise, okay? So coming back to our manual, we have these five charts. They are basically the charts ranging from nine to 13, you saw that. And then we have the char space, which is the number 32, okay? So now I want to explain to you this concept of man3. Why man3? You see here, the man command is divided into sections. This is a part where for Linux systems, but Linux are Unix-like, so they are the same basically. You see, I have at the first section, the executable programs or shell commands. You know that, right? When you say, for example, man cat, it's gonna give you back all the details about the cat command, which is an utility of the, the operating system. The second section is for system calls. For example, we can say man to write, okay? This is, of course, the function we always use with our programs. We have to include the Unix standard header file, and then we can use the function write, okay? Here you have all the details if you want to read how it works, um, you know very well. Then we have section three, like in our case, which contains library calls. For example, we can say man tree print f. Printf is the most used function ever, so here you can see how it works. You see here, we have a lot of kinds of printf. So basically, you got the point. The manual is divided into sections. Every section contains specific stuff. For us, section one, two, and three are the most important, of course. All right, let's go on. So we are at the beginning of our string, right? We have to skip all the white spaces that are in front of the string. How do we do that? Well, we have to recreate, we have to mimic the function in space. We have to skip all the spaces inside our string. I can do it with this while loop. Let's check it better. I have a while at str is equal to tab, at str is equal to new line, at str is equal to vertical tab, and so forth. Basically, here you have all the charts that are controlled by the space function. You have all these charts here from 9 to 13. You see, I have written this long Boolean expression in this fashion because it's easier to see all the possible cases. Writing all this expression in one line would have been quite cumbersome and difficult to understand. So I have, if this is true, okay, this expression is true. If this is true, this expression is true, so forth till the end where we have the space. Here I could have written the number 32 or the space itself. It is the same. So if some of this condition is true, namely if the char pointed by str is one of these chars, what do you do? Well, you increase the pointer str. So we're gonna point to the next char. We can go on. We can continue our search. We can skip this char, all right? 
I think this is pretty easy. There's nothing difficult to understand. Of course, this is a cumbersome way of writing. We have to write all the possible combinations one by one, but this is tedious. We saw that these charts are back to back. We have all the charts from nine to 13. So we can do something better. We are lazy ass as programmers, right? We don't want to do the job. So there is a cleaner way by which I can write the same code, the same idea. I can say if the char pointed by SDR is major equal nine and the char is minor equal 13, namely the char pointed by SDR is in the range nine 13, which is exactly the range of these chars, or the char pointed by SDR is a space, namely the char 32, what do you do? You go on, right? You see this while loop and this while loop do exactly the same thing, which is the best way to write. You tell me, I don't know. I think I would prefer this one. More short, more elegant, more clean, more, maybe more cryptic, but if you know the ASCII code, it's gonna be super easy. All right, with that piece of code, we have managed to skip these first spaces, right? Now we are here. We are at the plus and minuses. The function told us there is an unknown amount of plus and minuses. If we have an even number of minuses, we have a positive number, otherwise it's the opposite, okay? So what do I do? Same idea. I'm gonna say while at str, namely the char pointed by str is equal to a plus, or the char is equal to a minus, what do you do? You keep going on because I want to skip eventually all the plus and minuses, but in between, I'm gonna keep track of all the minuses. I'm I'm stumbling upon, you see? I say, if at str is equal to the minus sign, you're gonna increase my variable parity. That is starting from zero, of course. So here I have one minus, parity plus one, two minus, parity plus two, and so forth. At the end of the algorithm, this parity will tell me, hey, we have an odd or an even number of minuses, okay? Super easy, I think. So with that piece of algorithm, we managed to skip all these plus and minuses and we kept track of all the minuses, cool. Now we are with the piece of the string that we want. Same idea, my friend, we have a while loop, while at str is major or equal 48, and str minor or equal 57, what is that? You perfectly know, my friend, that's the range of integer charts from 48 to 57, okay? Here I'm saying to the computer, hey there computer, is this an integer char? Is this exactly the thing I'm looking for, namely these integer chars. If so, what do we do? We go to the number per equal 10. By now it's cryptic, we're gonna skip this for the first iteration. Just bear in mind that the variable number is equal to zero, you remember from the beginning. So I'm gonna multiply zero per 10 initially. What is the sense of this? You will know very soon. It's easy, probably you already understood. And then I do number plus equal at str, namely the char pointed, minus 48. What is that, my friend? You know super well by now. I'm gonna take my char, which is a number ranging from 48 to 57, you just saw here, and I'm gonna subtract 48. What does it mean? Well, if here I have the number 48, namely the integer char zero, minus 48, which is gonna be the value? Well, zero, the integer value itself that I want, Okay, so this is a way to convert a char to its integer value. I think that's super easy, right? If I have here, I don't know, the char 50, which is the integer char 2, I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna subtract to it 48, I get 2 itself, the, the integer value itself. So this is a way to convert a char to the integer value, perfect. I'm gonna take this value and I'm gonna add to the variable number. In this case, I have as a first, integer chart, the number one, I'm gonna get 49 minus 48. This value will resolve in one and I'm gonna add to the number, okay? So inside number I have one now. And then I just, I'm just gonna move on to the number two in this case, right? The integer char two. Same question as before, is the value pointed by str an integer char? Yeah, of course it is. We do the same. This time you see I have number per equal 10. What is this operation? Inside my number, I have the value one from before. So I'm gonna multiply that one per 10. You see, what is that? It's a shift base 10 operation. I'm gonna move one position the one, right? I have one, so next I have 10, I have 10. And then to this 10, I'm gonna add with the same operation as before, what? The number two. 
So number plus two is gonna be 12. You see at this level, 12. And then I'm gonna go on with this pointer arithmetic. Same operation as before. Now we are at this tree. I'm gonna shift of one position the number that now is 12. One position, 120, right? 12 per 10, 120. And then I'm gonna add the value pointed, which is three, 123. You see, when I do exactly what I want, I'm recreating the number pointed by this piece of string. Last iteration, same idea. Is this an integer char? Yeah, it is. Then shift one position again the number. I'm gonna get 1230, and then I'm gonna add to this number the number four, okay? This one. Boom, it's done. I have the number itself. I'm gonna move on in my string. What is gonna happen? Now I'm gonna stumble upon this A, okay? I'm gonna stumble upon this A, so this while is gonna break down. As a condition here, here I have your function should read the string until the string stop following the rules. In this point, in this exact point, I have stop of the rules, okay? I pass from an integer char to uh, an alphabetical char. So I'm finished. I'm finished. I have in my variable the number itself. I have only to check the parity variable. Do you remember? At this level here, I kept track of all the minuses. So now I'm going to check how many minuses do I have. Here I do the classic operation, which is parity module two. Basically, when I have an even number, for example, the number four, module two is going to give me back zero, of course, right? The number six, module two, zero. Basically, all the even numbers, module two, are going to give me back zero. That's an easy operation, I guess. So what do I do? Okay. If this value returned me from this expression is zero, it means that the value is even. I have an even number of minus signs. I exploit directly the result of this operation, inverting it with a bank, with an exclamation point. So if this value is even, this value is zero, I'm gonna invert it to a true Boolean value so I can enter this if, and then I'm gonna return immediately the number without changing it, because I know that I have an even number of minus signs. On the contrary, what does it mean? Well, it means that I have an odd number of minus signs, so I have to return the negative number, okay? That's it, my friend. This is the algorithm. Now we're gonna test it. You see, I have run a toy. I get exactly the number, you see? Exactly like in the sample problem. And of course, this is um, an integer, as you can see from my printf. So let's rewatch together all the function, removing all these spaces. Okay, remove here and then remove all the spaces here. All right, here we have, here we have the function, but here we have still our cumbersome expression. Now we're gonna try this shorter one. So this time I want to uh, test only, we're gonna remove this time this very long uh, check for the space function. We're gonna leave only this one. Let's watch if the code still works. You see, I have the same results. So basically, if you watch all the, the exercise, I have the E space function in two lines. Then I check all the plus and minuses, keeping track of all the minuses in my parity variable. Then I take the numbers that I stumble upon and I'm gonna accumulate in my number variable. I have this operation, which is a shift operation. It is important that the value is zero initially. So this per equal 10 for the first number is gonna be influential, okay? And then I just check, hey, do I have uh, an odd or even number of minuses? That's it. And then I'm gonna return the number. Okay, we are done with this function. I think it was pretty easy, right? Thank you for watching, my friend, enjoy.